Okay, so are you ready for this, this deep dive? It's going to be a wild one. I think I'm ready. Lay it on me. We are diving into From PMS to Menopause by Dr. Raymond Pete. And um, wow, just wow. This book, it's like he took everything we thought we knew about estrogen, menopause, all of it, and just tossed it out the window. Yeah, Pete definitely does not shy away from challenging conventional thinking when it comes to women's health, that's for sure. Yeah. Hormones, aging, the whole nine yards. He does not. Like right off the bat, he's saying menopause. It's more like Cushing syndrome. You know, too much cortisol, not an estrogen deficiency, which is what we always hear. So, I mean, if that's true, then everything we think about hormone replacement therapy, it's like, what are we even doing? Yeah, it really makes you step back and reexamine examine everything, doesn't it? See, Pete's whole argument, it all comes down to this idea that estrogen, it might actually be more of a shock hormone yeah, and that it actually has pro-aging effects. He even goes so far as to say that the way we understand estrogen has, well, kind of manipulated by an industry that profits off of it. Hold on. Whoa. Okay. That's a pretty serious accusation, isn't it? I mean, we hear about estrogen having risks like the link to certain cancers, but is he saying those risks are even worse than we realize? He is. And he even questions the whole idea of estrogen being protective for your heart, which is something you hear a lot. But he actually points to research, some of it going all the way back to the 1930s, that shows estrogen's potential to cause not only cancer, but things like blood clots and even, get this, tissue degeneration. Tissue degeneration. That sounds kind of terrifying. (laughs) It's not great. And Pete says these findings, they've been kind of swept under the rug because they don't fit the mainstream narrative. So instead of menopause being like, this simple thing where your estrogen just drops and you need to replace it. He's saying it's more about our bodies trying to protect themselves from estrogen's effects as we age. That's exactly it. He even talks about studies where men, after a heart attack, were given estrogen and actually had a higher risk of having another one, which, if you think about it, totally contradicts that idea of estrogen being good for your heart. Okay. My mind is officially blown. But if low estrogen isn't the main problem in menopause then what's causing all those symptoms that women experience? That is the million dollar question, isn't it? And that's where Pete's focus on, remember, cortisol and stress comes in. Remember how he compares menopause to Cushing syndrome? That's caused by too much cortisol. Right, and stress releases cortisol. So is he saying that stress is like the bigger problem in menopause than we realize? It's definitely a major factor, he says. Pete suggests those symptoms we think of with menopause, hot flashes, mood swings, trouble sleeping. A lot of that could be linked to this chronic stress response and how it messes with our hormones. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And it kind of makes you rethink all those times people tell you to stress less, right? Like it's not just about feeling calmer. It could be messing with your hormones in the long run. Exactly. Pete's argument is that by the time we get to menopause, our bodies are dealing with the effects of years, maybe even decades, of stress and exposure to estrogen. And he even argues that menstruating, even though you lose iron, might actually be a good thing in the long run. Wait, really? But why? I thought the idea was to get rid of your period. Like, that's what all those ads for birth control tell us. Right, but Pete sees it differently. He suggests that because your body's shedding the uterine lining every month during your period, it could be a way of getting rid of excess estrogen. Like, it's a natural detox process. And that potentially could reduce some of those long-term risks. See, this is why I love these deep dives. It's like turning everything you thought you knew upside down. You start to question everything. Questioning assumptions is how we learn. Exactly. So if menopause isn't just about low estrogen, what does Pete say we should be doing about it? Well, he's a big advocate for a more holistic approach, Mm. which makes sense. Instead of just replacing estrogen, he wants to address what he sees as the root causes of hormonal imbalance. So we're talking things like diet, supporting your thyroid, potentially supplementing with progesterone, and of course, managing stress. Okay, so before we get into all of that, because I have a ton of questions, especially about this whole coconut oil thing he's obsessed with, give me the quick rundown of what else Pete connects to estrogen. Like, what other issues does he say are impacted? Oh, get ready for this one. He has a whole list of conditions that he thinks are linked to either high estrogen or low progesterone. I'm talking migraines, varicose veins, even things like epilepsy. Epilepsy. Wait, seriously, how in the world does he connect that to hormones? Well, it all goes back to how estrogen and progesterone affect different systems in our bodies. Like he talks about how they impact blood vessel tone, for example. You mean like how blood vessels constrict and dilate? Exactly. Pete says estrogen can make veins more likely to dilate while progesterone helps them stay toned. So that could be why 
varicose veins, where your veins get all enlarged and twisted, could be linked to having too much estrogen. Okay, that's actually really interesting. I never would have thought to connect varicose veins to hormones, but it makes sense when you explain it like that. Right. It's all about connecting the dots. Yeah. He also points out how estrogen can make your nervous system more, like, excitable while progesterone calms it down. That's where those connections to migraines and epilepsy come in. So it's like this constant balancing act between those two hormones. Too much of one, not enough of the other, and things start to go haywire. That's the gist of it. And to make things even more interesting, Pete also emphasizes the link between low thyroid function and estrogen dominance. Oh, that's huge. Mm. So many women I know have thyroid issues. Is he saying that those can actually cause hormone problems? It's more like they're all tangled up together and make each other worse. Yeah. He suggests that low thyroid function very often shows up alongside estrogen dominance, and that makes all those negative effects even stronger. Which, for our listeners, that's a really important takeaway. If you're dealing with hormonal issues, getting your thyroid checked should be at the top of your list. 100%. And this is where Pete's approach gets super interesting. He says that by boosting your thyroid function, you can often reduce how much progesterone you need to balance out the estrogen. So it's not just about fixing one hormone in isolation. It's about how everything works together. Sensing a theme here. Yeah. Definitely. Pete's whole thing is understanding how interconnected these systems really are. Which honestly is kind of refreshing. So often it feels like healthcare is all about treating symptoms in isolation, but he's really advocating for a root cause approach, wouldn't you say? Totally. He wants us to look at the big picture and address those underlying imbalances instead of just slapping a band-aid on the symptoms. I am here for it. But speaking of questioning assumptions and big picture thinking, can we please talk about the coconut oil? Because that one's throwing me for a loop. Ah, yes. Coconut oil. This is where Pete tends to raise a few eyebrows, even among people who find his overall approach intriguing. Right, because we are constantly told saturated fat bad, vegetable oil's good. But he's saying the exact opposite, that coconut oil can actually help counteract the negative effects of estrogen. He is. And it comes down to a few things. The unique types of fatty acids in coconut oil, how our bodies use it for energy, and how different it is from those vegetable oils he's always warning against. Okay, now you've really piqued my interest. Break it down for me. What is it about coconut oil that he claims makes such a difference? Okay, so coconut oil, it's full of these things called medium chain fatty acids, or MCFAs for short. MCFAs? Those are different somehow. They are. They're metabolized way faster than the long chain fatty acids that you find in a lot of vegetable oils those long chain ones, they're more likely to end up as, well, fat. So it's like coconut oil gives you this like quicker energy boost. I can see how that would be good overall, but does Pete specifically say how that affects your hormones? He does. He says that by giving you that energy boost, it helps to support like your whole hormonal system, yeah. including progesterone production. Plus, he says coconut oil has antioxidants, which could help protect against some of the damage from that excess estrogen we were talking about. So it's the type of fat, how your body uses it, A&D, its antioxidant effects. Man, that's a lot for one little oil to do. Right. Really makes you think twice about everything you've heard. But, you know, got to keep in mind, this is all coming from Pete's perspective. Right, right. Friendly skepticism and all. So say someone's listening to this and they're like, all right this whole different approach to estrogen. I'm kind of into it, but like, what do I do? What are the actual steps Pete recommends? Well, we've touched on them a bit, but let's break it down. Like you said before, he's all about a holistic approach, not some quick fix. So we're talking diet, making sure your thyroid's good, maybe supplementing with progesterone, and of course, dealing with stress. Okay, let's unpack those one by one. First up, diet. What does a Pete-approved way of eating even look like? He's big on protein. That's a must. But the really key thing is cutting way back on polyunsaturated fatty acids. Those are the ones you find in lots of vegetable oils. So that tracks with the whole coconut oil thing. He's saying swap out those PUFAs for healthier options, coconut oil, saturated fats from animals, that kind of thing. Exactly. He says those fats are not only less harmful, but can be straight up good for you, especially when it comes to hormones. Interesting. So it's not just adding coconut oil to your diet. It's like a whole shift in the types of fat you're eating. Exactly. It's about creating the right environment inside your body so your hormones can be produced and used the way they're supposed to be. Got it. Okay, what about the thyroid? We talked about how important it is, but what do you actually do about it? Pete really stresses that you got to work with a knowledgeable healthcare provider to figure out what's going on with your thyroid and if you need any kind of supplementation. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Don't try to self-diagnose this stuff at all. But just so our listeners get the gist, how does he say thyroid hormones play into all of this? He's really clear that optimal thyroid levels are super important for getting your hormones balanced, especially the active form of thyroid hormone, T3. It plays a huge role in converting cholesterol into pregnenolone. Pregnenolone. That's I'm not Pregnenolone yeah. is a precursor to progesterone. And boom, there we are, right back at Pete's emphasis on progesterone being essential for hormonal balance, especially as we get older. Full circle. But progesterone supplementation, that's another one of those things that feels kind of loaded, you know? <laughs> like, people have such strong opinions about hormone replacement therapy in general. Oh, for sure. It's a whole thing with so many different approaches and strong opinions on all sides. But Pete is very much in favor of natural progesterone, not the synthetic progestins that you see a lot in conventional hormone replacement therapy. So, again, it's about choosing the right type. What's the difference between the natural and synthetic stuff? Well, Pete says that natural progesterone is, you know, chemically identical to what our bodies make, so it's going to have a gentler effect, more balanced. He claims it helps to counteract the estrogen dominance without the crazy side effects that some synthetic progestins have. Interesting. Does he actually say how much to take or how to take it? He steers clear of specific dosages because he's all about individualized treatment. But he does mention a bunch of different ways to take it. Oral capsules, topical creams, even... Um, suppositories, each with their own pros and cons. Wow, there's like a whole buffet of options. Sounds like you really do need to work with someone who knows their stuff to figure out what's right for you. Okay, so we've got diet, we've got thyroid, we've got progesterone. Last but not least, stress reduction. That one feels awfully broad. It is. But Pete sees it as totally essential. He's always pointing out that stress dumps cortisol into your system. And we already know that can throw your hormones out of whack and lead to all sorts of fun symptoms. Right. So managing stress isn't just about feeling better in the moment. It can actually like directly affect how well your hormones are working. 100%. And remember how Pete talks about estrogen being like a shock hormone? Being chronically stressed is like holding your body in that heightened state all the time, just pumping out those stress hormones. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. It's like stress just throws fuel on the fire of everything else we've been talking about. That's a great way to put it. So on top of those other things, the diet, the hormones, Pete is really big on making stress reduction a part of your everyday life. Like what kinds of things? He's a big proponent of getting enough sleep, regular exercise, mindfulness practices, mm -hmm. you know, things we all know we should do, mm -hmm. but let's be real, we don't always make time for. Yeah. But he's adamant that you've got to find what works for you and make it a habit. It's like those things become even more important when you're looking at it through this hormonal lens. It's not just about relaxing. It's about like taking care of these really powerful systems in your body. That's a great way to look at it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that even if someone isn't on board with everything Pete says, that emphasis on stress reduction is pretty universal. It's about building resilience no matter how you approach your health. I love that. Okay, so we covered Pete's main recommendations, which honestly kind of feel both radical and like common sense at the same time. It's a trip. But we've mostly focused on what he says, not necessarily the actual science behind it. Can you give us a rundown of some of the research he uses to back up these, let's call them unconventional views? Absolutely. He pulls from a ton of research, some of it going way back. Like, remember how he mentioned those early studies on estrogens linked to cancer and stuff? Yeah, the ones from the 1930s. It was kind of mind-blowing to hear that people were worried about that stuff back then. Right. He highlights the work of researchers like Loeb and Lipschitz, who show that estrogen could cause not just cancer, but problems with blood clotting, even tissue degeneration. But those findings kind of got lost as estrogen therapy became more and more common. So it's not that the research wasn't out there, it's that people weren't really paying attention to it. That's what Pete argues. He says those findings were mostly ignored or dismissed by mainstream medicine because they didn't fit the narrative they were pushing. Wow. What about his claims that estrogen isn't as protective for your heart and bones as we've been told? Those are big ones. He tackles those head on too. For example, he talks about the Framingham Heart Study, which actually found that women who were on estrogen had more heart attacks and strokes than those who weren't which kind of throws a wrench in that whole estrogen is heart healthy idea, right? Yeah, that's a big deal. I'm going to have to look into that study. What about osteoporosis? I thought estrogen was supposed to be crucial for strong bones. That's the common belief, but Pete says it's not that simple. He points out that estrogen can actually mess with how your body uses calcium, which can make your bones weaker in the wrong run. 
He thinks progesterone, along with enough thyroid hormone and vitamin D, might be more effective for keeping your bones healthy. So once again, it all comes back to balance. It's not just about one hormone. It's about how they all work together. Exactly. And that's a common thread throughout all of Pete's work, how interconnected these systems in our bodies really are. He also leans heavily on the work of Hans Selle, who is a pioneer in stress research. What's the connection there? Selye's research showed that estrogen can actually have similar effects on the body as stress. Remember how we were talking about stress triggering those shock hormone responses? Well, Pete's suggesting that estrogen might be doing something similar, especially when it's out of whack. So that really drives home that link between stress and estrogen dominance he's always talking about. It's not just that stress makes everything worse it might actually be causing some of those hormonal imbalances in the first place. Exactly. It all comes back to that in the end. Man, this is a lot to wrap my head around, but it's seriously fascinating stuff. Even if you don't agree with absolutely everything Pete says. And honestly, it's good to be a little skeptical. He's definitely making us think about women's health in a whole new way. I couldn't agree more. Whether you buy into his whole approach or not, I think his work sparks some important conversations about estrogen, menopause, and just how complex hormonal health really is. Absolutely. And isn't that what these deep dives are all about? Learning new things, questioning what we think we know, and feeling empowered to make the best choices for our own health and well-being. You said it. You know, it's funny. After all that, the thing that really sticks with me is that whole shock hormone thing, like how stress plays into all this, especially as we get older. It's pretty wild when you think about it, right? Pete's not just saying stress is bad for you. He's saying it can actually change how your body handles estrogen as you age. Right. It's like that whole stress makes you age faster thing. Yeah. He's actually giving us a reason for why that might be true, like at a hormonal level. Totally. And when you think about those classic menopause symptoms, the hot flashes, the mood swings, not being able to sleep, stress makes all of that worse, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. It's like your body's already on high alert, and then you add in those hormonal ups and downs, and it's no wonder it feels like everything's out of control. And that's where Pete's whole thing about cortisol comes in. If you're constantly stressed out, you're pumping out cortisol, and that just throws your whole hormonal system out of whack, mm. which could lead to, or at least make worse, those estrogen-dominant effects he talks about. Right, that makes a lot of sense. So even if someone's not totally buying everything Pete's saying about estrogen itself, managing stress, especially as you get older, just seems crucial. Like, it's preventative care for your hormones. 100%. And all those things we talked about, the diet, supporting your thyroid, maybe even taking natural progesterone, those aren't just about fixing something that's broken. They're about making your body more resilient to stress so it doesn't hit you as hard. That is a great way to put it. It's not about just feeling zen in the moment. It's about giving your body the tools to handle whatever life throws at you. Exactly. And that goes back to Pete's whole holistic approach. It's not about finding one magic pill. It's about making choices that support your health and your hormones as you age. Which, let's be real, is good advice no matter what. But this deep dive has definitely made me see all of that in a whole new light. That's what we like to hear. And remember, knowledge is power. The more you know about this stuff, the more you can advocate for yourself and make good decisions for your health. I am all about that. This has been, well, definitely eye-opening, to say the least. It's been a pleasure diving into all this with you. Likewise. And for our listeners, as always, we like to leave you with something to think about. We've been talking a lot about women's health today, but if stress really does ramp up the effects of estrogen, what does that mean for men? Could they be dealing with their own version of this as they get older? Something to ponder. Thanks for listening, everyone.